Moving on with piecewise function. So, so far I've given you an example and we've interpreted it, meaning we can substitute in x values for it. We just have to substitute it in the appropriate piece. We have graphed it by hand. So we graphed the whole entire equation and then we got rid of the extra unnecessary values. So it only graphed on the corresponding interval. Now what we want to do is we want to graph it by using the graphing calculator. So this is to double check the work that we just did in the last video, to double check to make sure that this graph is appropriate. So the first thing that we do is obviously pull up our graphing calculator, and we're going to substitute these equations into the y equals so we can graph them. Now, we have lots of y equals here, but most often we only use one of them at once. When we graph piecewise functions, you're actually going to have to use more than one of these y equals. So I'm going to have to use two of them because I have two pieces of my piecewise function. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're, is we're going to input in the first piece of x plus 2, but we actually want to input it in parentheses. So open parentheses x plus 2. Now, the reason that we do it that way is because we need to tell this calculator that we're only going to graph it over a certain interval. So since I used that word over a certain interval, we're going to input it as a fraction. x plus 2 is only going to be graphed over the interval. And so we need to put in the interval in this question, which in this case is the x less than negative 1, and we need to put that entered into right here, and again in parentheses. So open parentheses x, and now the less than symbol. All of these inequality symbols are underneath the test feature, which is above the math button. So we're going to have to do the second and then the math. Now we want the less than, so we can use option 5. So you can either scroll down to 5 and hit enter, which is what I'll do this time, or the easier way is probably just to select the option 5 or hit the 5 button. So x plus 2 is graphing over the interval x is less than, and my separating value is negative 1. Now, I need to do the second thing here, but I'm going to do it from my second interval. I want to double check that this matches the graph that I've done before, so I'm going to keep my colors consistent. I graphed my left hand in blue, and I graphed my right hand in green. So when I enter this in my graphing calculator, I'm actually going to enter in my second piece in Y5, only because I want it to graph in green, which stays consistent with my graph by hand. Now, for you, you probably graphed it all in the same color, and your calculator only graphed it all in the same color. So you might as well just put it into the Y2 equation. But it types it in the same way. So my equation was 3 minus X. I need to substitute it in in parentheses. And that interval is graphed over the region of when x is greater than or equal to. So my inequalities are in the test feature, which is above the math button. So second math. And the inequality that I'm using here is option 4, greater than or equal to, when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So now I need to graph this on my standard window. The easiest way to get your standard window is zoom, option 6, Z standard. And so you can see that we have the graph of our piecewise function here. And this graph should match identically with the graph that we've drawn by hand, where my blue is an increasing linear function on the left, and my green is a decreasing linear function on the right. And we can see that that does match pretty consistently with the graph that we've drawn by hand. The only difference between the graphing calculator and the ones that you graph by hand is it does not clarify what's happening at the endpoints here. 
Specifically, it does not clarify which of your endpoints is closed and which of your endpoints is open. So if we go back and we look at this graph here, notice they both look identical. When graphing these by hand, you need to be very specific which of those is closed and which of those is open. So if you think that you can graph this entirely by using your graphing calculator, you're going to be incorrect because you need to clarify what's happening at the endpoints here, closed circles or open circles, and those depend upon which one is the equal to and which one is just the open interval. So now we know how to graph piecewise functions on your graphing calculator. So now that we know how to graph it using the graphing calculator, we can actually also double check our points that we interpreted back in the first video example. So let's go back there for a moment. So I have all of these points here. I can use my graphing calculator to double check all of these points. So let's just start with part A. I want to double check negative five. So the official way that we check ordered pairs on our graphing calculator, whether it's a piecewise function or any other function that you're trying to check, you want to select the value feature and that is underneath the calculate feature. Since that's above the trace button, to do that we have to push second and then trace. That's going to give us to the calculate menu, so calculate menu. And we want to select option number one, which is going to tell us the value. So either hit one or hit enter since one is already highlighted. It should prompt you down here on the bottom left what value you want to interpret. So the value that we want to interpret is negative five. So we type in negative five and then we hit enter. So notice it gives us where we are on the graph, and it also gives us the official ordered pair down here, negative five, negative three. Now, this puts us on line Y1 because it's automatically going to use the first equation that you have substituted into the calculator, no matter whether that is the actual piece we are relating to or not. So to help me explain this, let's actually move on to part B. We want to figure out the value of zero. So the official way to double check this is the second trace to get us to the calculate feature, use the value button, and then it prompts us the value that we're looking for is zero. So I type in zero and I hit enter. So what I was trying to explain is it puts us on the first equation, no matter whether our point is actually on that equation or not. So notice it doesn't give us a value here in blue because our x value of zero doesn't apply to our first equation. So if we want to go to our second equation, we have to push the down arrow. And that will jump you to the second equation that is substituted into your calculator. Now mine was in the five, but most likely yours was under y2. So if I plugged in zero, it gives me out my y value of three, and it confirms the ordered pair of three. Now I've shown you the official way to substitute in the ordered pairs, the second trace, meaning the calculate feature. There's actually a shortcut way. The shortcut way is just to push the trace button. Now it unfortunately doesn't prompt you, but you can still type in the value that you want to specifically look at. So in part C, my value was five. So I just push the trace button and then I push the five button. And notice it will allow that substitution in down here. It just doesn't do the prompting for you. When we hit enter, okay, it gives us the y value that corresponds to it. It is not on our first or our left hand piece of this function. So let me push down and that confirms it's on our second piece that plots the point and it gives us the correct y value that goes with it. Now, even shorter than that shortcut is after you push that trace button once, you don't have to push it again. So if I want to look at part D, f of negative nine, since I've already done the trace feature, I can just substitute right in my negative nine for my x value. I don't have to push trace or I don't have to push second 
calculate value again. I can just move on to the next ordered pair. So enter. It's not on my second piece, so let me go back up to my first piece. Again, negative 9 is the point that I'm looking at, and it confirms my y value of negative 7 and tells me where this point is on my graph. So I said before, the graphing calculator does not give us the endpoints. But a way that you can double check that is by substituting in the endpoint. And so since our piecewise function is separating at negative 1, we need to substitute in negative 1 to confirm which endpoint applies. Basically, we need to check part E here. So I want to substitute in negative 1. If I hit Enter, Notice on my first piece, it doesn't give me any value because it does not have any value there because it was not less than or equal to. So if I move to my second equation and substitute in negative 1, notice it does plot my point and it does give me my y value there because that is my closed point there because that is the or equal to part of this equation. So you can use your graphing calculator to not only double check your graphing of these, but you can also use it to double check your interpreting or your evaluating of the x values. And I guess that also gives you a way to double check whether your endpoints are open or closed. Just substitute in the endpoint and see which one actually plots that point there for you. And now you should be able to double check everything by using this graphing calculator. In the next video, I'm going to do another example of the piecewise function, all three things that we've done in the last few videos. Interpreted it or evaluated it, graphed it by hand, and double checked it by using our graphing calculator.